If you have been asking if healing is real, stick around and find out that healing is for real. And we don't mean maybe. My name is Tony. And I am Zane. And we are two witnesses and representatives of the miraculous gospel of healing. Boom. I <laughs> am. I am this, Tony Myers. And I am Zainel Fuego. Back with the, the Miraculous Gospel of Healing podcast. I'm going to let you introduce this episode in a second. But first, we're going to have some fun. Now, you're in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Correct? Yeah. <laughs> Ain't that the home of bananas? Yes, sir. <laughs> Work all night on a spot of rum. Come on, be my backup now. Daylight gone, oh, man, they want to go oh, home. Right, right, right. <laughs> Stocking up banana till the morning come. Did hey, light, come in, me want to go home. Hey, Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. Hey, light, come in, me want to go home. <laughs> hey, Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. Hey, light, come in, me want to go home. Hey, oh. <laughs> hey, oh. Hey, light, come in, me want to go home. A beautiful bunch of ripe banana. Till I come in, they want to go home. <laughs> you get in there now. Hides the deli, black tarantula. Till I come in, they want to go home. <laughs> Stack six foot, seven foot, eight foot bunch. Till I come, come in, they want to go, go home. home. <laughs> It's all day, it's all day, it's all day, day. I'm surprised you know that song, mate. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised Here's you know that song. The incredible Harry Belafonte. Right, right. Love Harry that Belafonte. song, by the way. Yeah. I'm surprised you know that song. <laughs> <laughs> we still we still we still sing that song here like as in in um in, in events but it's actually it's actually one of the classics yeah yes one of the classics <laughs> i've loved that song since i was a child yeah okay okay i know that dates me quite a bit <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. That's cool. One of these days, I'll actually share some of our some of the the, the the calypsos that we have here that are like classics. I'll share. I'll share. I'll, I'll send some to you and see if see if you like it and see if you're, if if you're familiar with some of them. I uh, maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am familiar with Harry Belafonte. Okay. Okay. He's one I am familiar with. Oh, um, right. love his stuff. All right. All right. Go ahead and introduce our topic. No, it's not rum and it ain't bananas. <laughs> no, it is not rum. So the last episode, we actually said we were speaking about a particular topic and Holy Brother Tony made a proposition, you know, that we should actually do a separate episode on this. And so this episode is actually titled that you were taught to lie to yourself. And the, the idea or the concept that I was, I was really unpacking is that if you have never considered it, religion has taught you to not be true to yourself. This is a paradigm that you have been that that you are living in. This is a paradigm that you have you have been living in for all of your life. As long as you came into contact with religion, you were never taught to be truthful. Now, some of you in particular that might rub 
it may, it may rub your, your heart a, a little with, with some friction. But I encourage you to hear, um, to hear me out. Once you've become part of the Christian community, once you've become part of any Christian denomination, you are taught to follow rules. You are taught to follow rules in an attempt to validate your righteousness before God because you were taught that something is wrong with you. Naturally, if you were taught that something is wrong with you in the moment you're taught rules, even scientifically, psycho psychologically, it is understood that if you tell someone that this is the rule, what their mind understands is that they are the opposite of that rule. If you tell somebody, don't, don't steal here, tell them that sufficiently in their mind they believe that they are naturally inclined to stealing and that's why this rule exists. Right? With that in mind, you have been programmed to follow these rules so much that unknowingly, you don't, you don't, the rules have taught you the opposite in your heart. And so in your heart, you believe that you are the opposite of what those rules state and because the, the rules exist to stop you from actually doing what you really want to do. That means for people, for most people, and this is something that is very prevalent and most believers don't even question it. Like right now, there's a great, a great, a great statistic of even teenagers that are pregnant in churches up to last year, the year before. It's because these children may not have been taught what they, what they need to be taught. They were not educated, but you did tell them no fornication. And the consistency of that actually breeds that into their mind and heart. So they're more aware of it. So indirectly, following the rules has taught you to not be true to yourself. Indirectly. Any type of rule-keeping system is actually a, a rule-keeping system for validation. It's really teaching you to not follow what you truly want to do. Now, we're not arguing here whether these rules were good rules or bad rules. What we're actually saying is the mere fact that you were following rules. To follow a rule means that it, you are actually doing something that your heart does not want to do. If your heart really wanted to follow those rules, you would not see it as rules. You just see it as that's how one lives life without any sort of desire to do the opposite. If you really wanted to follow the rules, you'd have no temptations. Zero temptations, because the rules are just part of what you are. This here reveals the fact that you have been taught all of your life to do the right thing and to say the right thing, whilst your heart says the complete opposite of what you're saying and what you're doing. And when it comes to healing, this is a massive problem. Why is it a problem? Because the New Testament actually makes it very clear that the Holy Spirit is in your heart. And if the Holy Spirit is in your heart, then not living from your heart means no power for healing. Some of us have been taught these rules so much that you, there are certain people, in, even in, your, in, the, in the church, that you don't want to be around. You don't trust them. They give you a kind of strange feeling. You don't want to be around them. But the rule of love says that you need to do that. And some people end up in very dark places because they follow the rules instead of the guidance of the Spirit in their hearts. So some of us in particular truly don't believe in healing. But you're saying that you believe and you're having faith because it's the right thing to do. And the power does not come from the right thing to do. The power comes from what you truly believe in your heart. Does that make sense? Perfect sense. The empowerment doesn't come from the words. It comes from the heart, that's where it's empowering. That's why I can say nothing and see someone healed. That's why I can say gummy worms and yes. see someone healed. The empowerment isn't in the words. 
It is in the heart. In the heart. 100%. But yet, Christians are taught you speak what you're supposed to say. And all of this, that comes from the mind. That comes from the intellect. Yeah. Without the heart belief, the two are not cohesive. So therefore, you get nothing. Nothing at all. But Zane is absolutely right. You were taught the importance of law over following the Holy Spirit. It's, 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 people don't realize that in the New Testament, it says that Christ has been made wisdom unto you. Do you know, according to Paul in the New Testament, the law is for babes and wisdom is for the mature. And because mature Christ is in you, you don't need law. You need you know you need to function from wisdom. This is how one lives from the heart. To live from your heart is to live from wisdom. To live to live from wisdom is to educate your heart on what is functional from what is dysfunctional. Let me say that again. Eh? To live from wisdom is to live from your heart to, or to educate your heart on what is functional from what is dysfunctional. Most believers listening to this, you have been so brainwashed with law that you have not even fathomed that you can live from wisdom. It's not even a thought in your mind. Let me just invert what I'm saying here now. What I'm also saying is living from the, from the spirit is a matter of living based on your experience with the Spirit and knowing that if you have this experience with the Spirit, then everything that the Spirit says is true. This is what Paul says when he means that your faith is supposed to be in the power of God. Because if it manifests once or your seat manifests around you, then you know it's true. And therefore, you know that everything that God says has to be true because God is not changing his mind. His mind is one principle, one direction. He's single-minded. And therefore, anything that God says is true. So even in the context of the scriptures, if you have experienced anything with the Spirit, it does not have to be healing. It could be a manifestation of a, of a gift. It could be any miraculous experience that you had, any, super, any experience that is not natural, that you had with the Spirit, proves that the Spirit is present, and therefore you prove that everything that God says is true. Believers, if you really want to see healing in your body, you have to get away. You have to make a decision to put down this understanding that you need to have faith because it's the right thing to do or it is the right thing to say. Whilst your heart saying that this is not true. Holy Brother Tony actually put it like this. He says people use faith as currency. This is one and the same. You're using faith as currency to get something from God. You are not having faith. You are not living in faith. You're using it to get something from God, which means you're using it because you think that if you have faith, God is then going to release it. God is going to give it to you. When really your whole paradigm is a lie. God is not going to give you anything. God has already given you the spirit and you have to apply the spirit to the situation. You have to actually take the spirit I mean, that could be misleading, but literally take what God gives you and apply it to the situation to bring the situation into its correct order. If you are believing that you need to have faith because it's the right thing to do, what you're saying is that you do not have the Holy Spirit. 
who is the spirit of faith. He is the spirit of faith. Therefore, so therefore you already have the faith. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to get? Not a thing. Not a thing. Therefore, to, uh, to walk in faith is to walk in the spirit. Instead of using it as currency, as a bartering chip with God, yeah. this is where we get into, well, God hasn't healed me. Exactly. The moment that comes out of your mouth, you actually have just invalidated your professional feet. Sorry, you verbally invalidated it. But it's a revelation of your invalidation of faith. Because faith is not an action. Faith is the spirit. And let me add to that. Mm -hmm. Faith, the application of faith provokes us to action. Exactly. 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 It's the same thing as saying... If faith is mentioned in the New Testament by the Apostle Paul as the fruit of the Spirit, as a fruit of the Spirit, right? Under the fruit of the Spirit, he's speaking about faith is mentioned there. And then in another book, on another letter, sorry, he says, he refers to the Spirit as the Spirit of faith. Then, follow me here, right? Once you understand this, then you will understand how much you may have been lying to yourself. If the spirit is the spirit of faith, let's just see. Let's just interchange the spirit of faith with the spirit of walking. <laughs> if you want to get from point A to point B, you keep walking until you arrive. Most believers are applying faith in the same context as somebody would make two steps and say, God, I have walked. Why am I not at the destination? I am not at the destination. So you want to go to Walmart and your house across the road. What most of us are doing is lying to yourself. You don't believe that you could be healed. And you make two steps outside of your house and say, God, we're my healing. I'm Instead believing. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying you're believing you make two steps and you say believing why am I not at Walmart you see that right there is treating walking as though you're trying to get something from God so you applied it for a moment for about five, uh, probably uh, 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 two seconds or five seconds or 15 seconds you applied some walking and then you say why am I not at Walmart God God didn't give me, God did not give me Walmart. Why is the person who understands that he has a spirit of walking continues to walk until he arrives at Walmart? This is the same thing with faith. You don't apply faith. If you have the spirit of faith, if you have the spirit of faith, you continue to, to walk in faith until you get manifestation, which means. Until, it, until your healing is revealed. Which means if you are not, you find that you're, you, if you're truly doing this, because if you're actually saying, if you're one of those that are saying, I'm not being healed, then you, then you don't qualify where I just said it. You have not been walking in faith. You have been applying faith as a qualification to get something from God. And if God gives you the spirit of, of walking, God is not going to give you Walmart. You have to get there applying what he has given you. And in the same way, if you are applying faith and you realize that it's taking longer than you may have anticipated for it to actually come into fruition, what the scripture says is that you, what you do is that you strengthen your heart. That means that you should not be spending time in thoughts that contradict what you say you have in faith for. You should be justifying your healing. And justifying your healing doesn't mean you need to be, again, saying it as though because I said it, 
God is going to give it to you. You have to function from the fact that you are the one that's responsible to bring the healing into your body. You are the one that are responsible here. You are the one to actually apply this. When we actually get to the point, and I'm well, actually, I, I don't want to veer off too much into other things, but I'm going to stick, stick right here. This all starts with you. If you truly feel in your heart that you feel like this healing not working, then you need to stop and be real with God and ask the Spirit, at least be real with yourself and say, there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't believe. Because if you can't identify, if you don't identify it, you cannot get to the point of believing. <laughs> if you continue to lie to yourself, the only person that's suffering is you. Because the only person that's subject to what you truly think and feel is you. So it is, it is better. Even, even in, at the institute, once I'm mentoring anybody, one of the things that's definitely going to come up is this topic right here. Because many people are actually walking a life doing what they truly think and feel that they need to do to please God so that God will be pleased with them so that they will be blessed and they will get these things instead of living a life really coming to realize God, I don't believe you for, I don't believe you for my healing. And if you don't get to that point, then the Spirit cannot actually show you what He needs to show you or guide you where He needs to guide you so that you can get to the point of actually believing. And why is He doing that? You're talking to us online and you're saying, I believe in. Well, I'll just wrap up what I'm saying with this and pass it back to Holy Brother Tony. <laughs> why is it, Holy Brother, that people could believe? that they would come and tell us it's not working and we will believe them when we see in it for ourselves. I doesn't get that. <laughs> Why the heck do you think that you're going to come and say to us that this, it is not working and we will say, okay, when we are mechanically reproducing this for others, as well as for ourselves. The only qu the question here is not, you cannot invalidate us from believing, it can't cause us to invalidate this thing when we know this is actually what we are applying. And therefore, technically, what you really need to do is to be true to yourself. And I'll pass it back to Holy Brother Tony here. <laughs> And that's, I mean, that's absolutely right. That's when I tell people, you have to be transparent with yourself. Yeah. This is a spiritual truth. This is not a back and forth. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't work. That's not the truth at all. That's not the truth at all. God... Everything in the kingdom of God works mechanically. God spoke one time and the sun rises every morning and sets every evening. Like clockwork, yeah? Mechanically. Without devi deviation. Like clockwork, just ruling. Healing is the same way. When you walk in the truth, it mechanically happens. Yeah. If it's not happening, why? Because you're not walking in the truth. I mean, we could even reframe that and say, by saying that what you are experiencing is what your heart truly believes. 
Yes. You are experiencing your functional truth. Yeah. You are experiencing what you truly believe. Which is, once again, why you have to be transparent with yourself. Not speak it with a forked tongue. Speak yeah. the truth. As Holy Brother Zane said, it's absolutely fine and much needed to admit I don't believe. Let's be straight, buddy. Just be honest. Now, I am going to say this. This is a point many people will say, <laughs> Lord, I don't believe. Help my unbelief. Lord, I don't believe. Help my unbelief. Lord, I don't... And expect the, the belief just to drop down from somewhere. The irresponsibility again, the entitlement. The man who said that to Jesus, was he... Even though he said that, was he able to heal the child? No, Jesus had to do it. Exactly right. Everybody misuses that verse. <laughs> we could only qualify that as something that you could fall back on if when he said that, he was able to heal the boy. He wasn't able to heal the boy, which means that you cannot use that as a fallback. So don't get into that. Hey, I'm in unbelief. So then what do you do? Believe it. Take it as fact. At least, at least, if you feel like you have difficulty in making the decision to believe it, at least... Pick up the scripture. Read what it says. You know, and ask the spirit. I do this all the time. When I have come out and told God, look, I don't believe you here. I know I'm, I'm supposed to walk in faith here, but I don't believe this. But help me to actually understand and the spirit. True, true to fulfillment. The spirit always guides me within and 24, 48 hours, going to guide me to something and actually show me the concept. And then it registers. And then I understand. And then I can say, okay, I believe. And then manifestation follows that. At now, least take the responsibility. Uh, I'm going to get off just a little bit. Not really, mm -hmm. but I want to make one point. When, here's the problem. When the leaders that you're looking to hmm. lie to you, then you are a reflection of that. Wow, yeah. And I'm going to give an example. And mainstream Christianity on any given Sunday, you will hear pastors spreading a lie, which is misinformation, to prove a point. Do you believe me? I'll give you some examples. There, a very famous per preacher said this one. And many have actually, many, many, many big time ones. So I know most people have heard this. <clears throat> Back in the ancient times, when a, when a sheep would get away from the flock, 
and the shepherd would go out searching for that sheep. It was the shepherd, when he found the sheep, it was out of mercy for the sheep. And one use of the staff was to break the sheep's legs so it could not wander off anymore. So the shepherd would put out of love after the shepherd broke its legs. The shepherd would place it on his shoulders and lovingly carry the sheep back to the herd. How many of you realize sheep with broken legs don't survive? Number one. <laughs> Where people is clutch, man. Sure. <laughs> here's, here's another one. Wow. Okay. And this comes from the pulpit. Have you heard it before? You out there in the Caribbean, so you may not have ever heard that. I don't know. I'm not too sure, but it sounds I, wild. I, I can actually name one of the people that have said that. Shucks. Which <laughs> I'll respect, I won't, but. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Here's another one. And this one goes around on Facebook quite a bit. That there's a woman that had a pet snake. The pet snake quit eating. The woman's worried about it. Goes to a veterinarian. The veterinarian told her, well, the snake's sizing you up so, so he can eat you. Now, this is a lie. Number one, a veteran veterinarian will, ne <laughs> will never tell you that because that snake is incapable of eating you. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> there is no veterinarian in the world that will tell you that a snake that you have as a pet, there's only one snake in the world big enough to swallow a human being whole. Right. That's the anaconda. Right. And yet they have never found any verifiable proof that anaconda has ever swallowed a human being. <laughs> These are lies from the pulpit, from people who are supposed to be integ have the utmost integrity saying it's okay to prove a point through a lie, through spreading misinformation. But prove what point? Well, in that case, that those that are around you are just looking to eat you. Don't trust those around you. Something like that was the moral of that story. <sighs> That, that was the more of that story. Interesting. And so these types of things go all the... There's one about an eagle. Uh, if a crow lands on it to kill it, then it takes up, goes into the atmosphere where the crow can't breathe and then has to drop drop off or something. My point is, the very ones that should have the utmost integrity are saying it's okay to lie. And I see ministers throwing this stuff around. Hmm. It is sickening. But I just That's wanted to bring it to people's attention don't be so gullible and listen to everything you hear. That's disheartening to hear that actually people are using things like that to fortify lies. It's like you're using one light to fortify another light. And, and I, I recently made a post about that yesterday. I, I brought I that up. That. 
You would be amazed how many people, one person in particular who I am friends with and who I know personally, um, said, Jesus used fictional characters. They're called parables. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> and and she 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 went on to put the definition of parable, right? And I said, right there, your definition shows the truth. And that is that Jesus used simply common life to demonstrate a moral, to demonstrate a point. Right, right, right. He did not twist facts to prove no, a point. Didn't. No, he did not in any form or fashion. No, he did not. So you cannot say that Jesus demonstrated that. He did not, ever. But these are people actually defending. They defend and any saying it's okay to lie. Yeah, another, yeah. another person brought up Clementine and the Phoenix. My response to that one was simply this. So you're telling me because Clementine chose deception, chose to use a mythical bird, <laughs> that that makes it okay? Really? That's to tell you how steep they are in it, you know. How steep they are in using untruth, you know. They are custom living that is a paradigm. Exactly. So, I just, I know it's a little off topic, but I wanted to bring that up. No, but I think it's necessary that you actually point it out because these are things that are keeping believers back, especially if they, if they want to heal or they want to see healing for themselves. These are things that reveal how your paradigm is based on it and now it makes lies or using lies acceptable. Yes. And if it's acceptable, then you live in like that on a daily basis. Because that, that ain't stopping there, you know. And like you pointed out uh, on the last episode, in order to construct a huge deception, you have to know the truth to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. So it's called a lie. Mm-hmm. And if you're saying that Jesus is the truth, you have no business entertaining nor making it okay to be in a lie. You have no business there. You are outside of your character of the identity that you actually see that you be that you're representing, as well as you're outside of your covenant. Those are in, those are dangerous places to be. And with that, let us close up. Here's everybody's prayer for the day. I am declaring, be blessed, be healed, and be a blessing. Arise and get, and, and get into that healing. All right.